Hello, Coach Holmes here, and today we'll be talking about trapezoids, and more specifically, medians of trapezoids. So, what is a trapezoid exactly? Well, we you've probably seen it before, you probably know about it, but to be specific, it's a quadrilateral with one pair of opposite parallel sides. So for example, if I look at this trapezoid A, B, C, D, I know that A, D would eventually intersect with B, C if I would extend the line. But, it met, but because of that, if I extend AB and DC, they won't necessarily intersect. So AB is going to be parallel to DC. All right. So I know that for sure. So in this case, AB is parallel to DC. Now, what are the bases exactly? What's the base of a trapezoid? Well, it's going to be the side that is parallel. Okay. So AB is one base as well as DC being the second base. So I know those two bases are parallel. Those are gonna be, again, my bases. Now, what are my legs? Those are the non-parallel sides. So for example, AD and BC. Those are my two non-parallel sides which we'll call those the legs. Now, what about the base angles? We have to look at those as pairs, okay? We can't just look at all four of them and say, oh, all four of them are the angle, base angles because they're all the bases. No, no, no. Looking at the pair of angles, angle A and angle B, as well as angle D and angle C. Those are my base angles. Now, what about the isosceles tri trapezoid? Well, we know what isosceles is. It basically means two congruent sides because we know a tri isosceles triangle has two, has two congruent sides. So, so how would this work right here? Well, it is a trapezoid with legs with both legs that are congruent. All right. So if both the legs are congruent, then it's an isosceles trapezoid. All right. It has to have two congruent sides, which typically it's always going to be the legs. Now, looking at a couple of theorems that we have. Isosceles base theorem. So what is that exactly? Well, basically state that each pair of base angles are congruent. Okay. Each pair of base angles are congruent. So if I look at this, let me draw that. So A, B, C, D. Well, remember, this is one pair, A, B, A and B. That's one pair, so that's gonna be congruent. And the second pair is C, D. Those are gonna be congruent as well. So really, one half, yeah. So if I look at the top, both angles are gonna be congruent to each other. And if I look at the bottom, both of those are gonna be congruent to each other. All right, now, diagonal theorem. The diagonal of an of an isosceles 
trapezoid are congruent. So if I make an isosceles trapezoid again, so these are congruent. Here's my diagonal lines. So what I could say is that AC, the diagonal of AC is congruent to the diagonal of BD. All right. That's what that theorem tells us, is that the two diagonal lines are gonna be congruent with each other. Now, if I look at trapezoid median theorem, the median is, first off, we gotta remember what median is. So here's a non-isosceles trapezoid. If I make two halfway points on both sides and draw a line, that's a median, okay? It's just a segment from two midpoints, all right? Now, the median of this right here, the median happens to be both parallel to the bases as well as the average of the two bases. So not only am I saying that this is parallel, but we can also find that this is minority average. Now, a simpler way of looking at it is say M is median, base one plus base two over two. That's the easiest way to look at it, okay? That's one way of looking at it. Because looking at this sample right here, I have FR, which is one of my bases at 22, and my second base is 15. Well, I already got the median, but I'm missing a second base. But I can still find that second base if I use this right here. So just to rewrite it, I know that the median is 15, my first base is 22, and I gotta look for my second base here. Now, since this is dividing first, or since this is the dividing, I gotta work my way backwards. So to work my way backwards in this, I gotta divide, which I have to worry about the division part, I mean. So I gotta multiply. So multiply by two, 30 equals 22 plus B2. Then I gotta subtract the difference. So I subtract 22 from both sides. So my second base is eight. So that's what KS is. KS is eight, okay? But now, but even if we're given these two right here, <coughs> all we have to do is take the average of those two, which means we're adding them, then divide by two, and that gives us our median. So even if we have given the median, if we work out with this formula right here, we should be able to find the second base. Thank you, have a good day.